We're up to part 10 of our conversation with Greg Godovitz. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Greg has done so much for Canadian music, and he knows so many international artists. It's amazing the stories he tells. He wrote these two books. We'll have links in the description where you can pick them up. It's amazing his history in music, being an early member of the band Flood. Then, of course, his solo stuff and Gatto. Here's our conversation with Greg Godovitz. I have a, I have a quick Doug Bennett story for you. Uh, we played The Misty <laughs> Moon in Halifax, and Doug was there. And he says, I got to tell you the story. He says, I was in Toronto. Uh, my brother, I was with my brother who was driving, and we stopped at a gas station, and I could see the gas station guy recognized me. So I said to my brother, have you got a pen? Because this guy is going to come over and ask for my autograph. And the guy came over and said, hey, I got to tell you, man, I really love your new album. He thought it was me. He thought Doug was me. <laughs> and I could see the similarity. It, uh, he says, so I started writing my name and he says, that song you wrote about Carol Pope. And he says, and then I realized he was talking about you instead of me. <laughs> what was that experience like for you? Well, we were, they expected a bunch of lumberjacks from Canada to show up and we showed up in full glam drag, you know. I'd been to England earlier uh, and went clothes shopping on my own and came back with all this incredible clothes from Kensington Market and Granny Takes a Trip and all those, you know, uh, what was it? All, all those wonderful shows, uh, stores on the King's Road and stuff, Carnaby Street. And two weeks later, the Pillings are with me and we go back to England to go shopping, you know? So it was like that. So when we showed up, all of a sudden, we, we're all like, it was like Rod Stewart and the faces coming there. You know, we were just total rock and roll guys. And Oldfield was this hippie kind of laid back guy who was probably pretty disgusted by our behavior. I mean, one night we... Ed, Ed Pilling had jumped off the dining room table. We had these Bacchanalian dinners, like beggar's banquet. And he jumped off and broke his foot. So he's sitting in a chair in the living room and uh, Jorn Anderson, the drummer, and I get the keys to the wine cellar and we go down and we get, and then we went outside where they had about 20 dozen eggs piled up in these containers. And I'm loading up my pockets with them and we come in and, how you doing, Ed? He goes, oh, I'm okay. I said, enjoying the fire, are we? He goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next thing, this huge orgy of destruction happens. Priceless tapestries covered in egg yolk. Buckets of water being, kicking open doors where people were in, in love and throwing buckets of freezing cold water on them. And <laughs> the next day, Richard Branson shows up and I'm walking outside and he goes, no, no, you. I want to have a word with you. And I'm looking down thinking, boy, he's got nice shoes on. He goes, I understand I missed a bit of fun last night. And I'm like, oh. And he says, the next time you guys decide to do that, at least have the decency to offer me a role in it so I could have some fun too. That's all he said about it. I'm sitting recording, I'm recording the first Gatto album at Listen Audio in the old part of Montreal. And I've got my house coat on, my terry, coat, house, terry cloth house coat, and my pajamas, which is all I wore at the manor. And I go over to get a carafe of wine and some escargot to take back from this restaurant in the courtyard. And I hear this English voice going, I know you. I know you. I know you. And I said, oh, Richard, it's uh, Greg from Flood. He goes, that's right. You owe me 30,000 pounds. I said, I was just the bass player in the band, man. I, I guess they stiffed him on the bill. But I always regret that I didn't take him into the studio to show him what my new band sounded like. Lord knows what would have happened. I just okay. grabbed my stuff and went back in, you know. When I had Rock Talk on CFRB for those two years, and I had to give it up when I moved to Calgary, uh, it was basically record company would say, Ray Davis from the Kinks is in town. Do you want him? Oh, yeah. You know, so I heard I get, about that. I heard about yeah. that interview. I read about well, that. Well, he wouldn't let he wouldn't come to the studio and he wouldn't let me into his hotel room. So he got his personal assistants to bring a couch from the room out into the corridor. And that's where we did the interview. And I, I prided myself on really going deep into an artist's 
because I know I've had bad interviews, right? Well, well tell this the guy, audience what you said when to get him. Yeah. So I asked him these great questions and I was getting, yeah, no, monosyllabic one word answers. So I said, you know, Ray, I've always looked at you as the Charles Dickens of rock. And he went, really? <laughs> and I had him. I had him right there. Then he got chatty. And I said, and your sense of humor in your writing. Well, how do he, so he's calling me on it. How do you, where do you see the humor? I said, well, ducks on the wall for starters from a soap opera. And he starts singing, my baby's got the most deplorable taste, but her biggest mistake is hanging over the fireplace. And then I come in with the Dave Davis part and we're singing, she's got ducks, ducks on the wall. And I'm singing with Ray Davis and I'm, I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about it, you know. This guy next to the Beatles and the Stones, for me, it was the Kinks. I mean, I love everything that guy's done. So to be there singing with him, you know, it was, it was that magic moment that broke the ice. But who wouldn't like the compliment of being compared to Charles Dickens? Yeah, no kidding. You know, and, and then he asked me to elaborate. And I said, well, Dead End Street, for starters, you know, there's a crack up in the ceiling and the kitchen sink is leaking out of work and out of money. Sunday joint of bread and honey. I mean, he was shocked that I knew all the lyrics to all these songs, you know. We'll have more from Greg Godovitz in the next three, four days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos and buy a Rock History Canada t-shirt. Help support our channel. I'm John Bowden. Take care of yourself.